I was in court yesterday, and uh, this Judge Wilson, this Wilson guy, which I have a the guy I I, I have the bill for that I didn't give it to you right away. Remember we talked about that? You said, why, oh. why didn't you give it to him right away? Because I hadn't performed the order. Right. Right. So I had the bill, <laughs> but I left it in my trailer. <laughs> so I didn't oh. have it with me, and I had Wilson again. So anyways, I'm standing there in court, and he's like, uh, he's like, uh, he says, well, you got counsel yet? I says, yeah, I have counsel. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to tell you I have counsel. He yeah. says, uh, well, who is it? I says, well, it's Carl. Oh. He goes, well, Carl who? I says, I don't know. I don't have a guy's card here. I don't recall. Yeah. And he goes, well, where's he from? I says, well, I don't recall. I don't have his card here. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, uh, I was, uh, I, I just I just finished. We were working at 29 below Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit and, and stuff. And, and I'd been putting in 12, 14-hour days at work with these guys. So I, I, I've just been burnt, like, I'm 53 years old. Like this is really taking the edge off me. So, uh, so he he says, well, he says, uh, he says, you, you're coming back next Friday. He says, I am. He says, yep. He says, I want your counsel here in person, uh, or I want you, if he can't be here, I want you in person. I said, well, I'm not sure if I have enough coin because I don't get paid for a couple of weeks. So I'm not sure if I have enough coin to. To 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 retain my counsel uh, yeah. properly, <laughs> right? And he goes, well, if he's not here, you have to be in here in person. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, like, well, I says, well, I I believe I might. And he goes, no, you, if 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 he's not here, you have to be here in person. Do you understand? <laughs> I says, well, okay. So you want me here? If my counsel can't be here, and he goes, I want you here in person. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's telling me he wants me here in person so that I can plea, right? Right. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll be I'm taking the week off work and I'm going to hang around the courthouse all week down there in the big city and and uh, I'm going in with my claim and I'll just put a notice in. In their so, file, if they can let me, that I will be there with my claim. Yeah. So what's funny is when he when um, he when he kept saying to you, um, he wants you here in person. What you know? What did you say to him? I played the duck, as if okay. I didn't know what he was talking about. I just played well. I, I said, he, he, he said, did you say to him? You see what I'm saying? What I was hoping you were going to say. Oh, and when you do that Celsius, the Fahrenheit thing, when you're going down to, like, you said negative 29? Yeah. The more that you guys go down negative, the closer you get to Fahrenheit. So, like, negative 29 is, like, negative 20, 21 Fahrenheit. So, the closer you go, I think negative 40 is identical. I think when you guys yeah. do negative 40, we're negative 40. Yeah. So, as you as you, as you get closer to negative 40, the numbers start matching. You know what I'm saying? They almost, you know, they almost went parallel then. So if it's negative 29 there, it's negative like 20 here. So it's, we kind of understand once you start going in the negative 20s, 30s, it's almost identical to our temperatures. Yeah. Uh, but no, when the, he kept saying to you, I think he was trying to help you, man. When you kept saying, when he kept saying, I want you to appear in person, you should have said, what person do you wish me to appear as? I was so tired. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, but person just means a mask. What what mask would you like me to wear? I thought he was trying to trick me. I thought he, he was he trying is. to tell me he that he, he, he is. wants he me wants to show you. up as my person. He wants you to appear in person, okay? As what? As the prosecutor? As a judge? As a jury member? As a defendant? What person would you like me to appear as? Because I only know how to appear as a man. Now, if you'd like to appear as a person, what person would you like me to appear in, and, and how do I do it? Because I'm not confident to appear as a defendant. I'm, I, I'm not very good at it. I've never been a defendant. But, I've, I've, but, 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 but since the moment I've been born, I've always been a man. If you want me to appear as a man, I can do that, you know, like walking in my sleep. But to appear as a person, what person in particular? What mask do you want me to wear? 
Yeah, I thought he was. I thought I took him more as a threat that I better no. show up and. No, he he was kept asking you. He kept asking you. I want you here in person, just like what happened with Bali, in England. They kept saying to him, "Is the person?" And they were calling out the three defendants' names, and they kept saying that uh, we we're only here as you know we're here as man. We're not here in person. And I says, and they said, well, you know, if the persons aren't here today, we're going to hold this over for like six months. And I was like, I'm not going back to England. F this. But I he would hold the warrant. He would, uh, if I'm not here in person, that he would, he would uh, issue a warrant for my arrest, which I thought was strange because I've always been there. That's right. But what I'm trying to say is, you appear in person. And like I said, when I jumped up when I did Bali's case, I said right. to them, I said to the, I said to the court, I said. The persons known as Bali, person known him, person known as him, you know, as her, are in this court at this time. But the only problem is, and, and then I, the, the lady walked over to me and says, who are you? Like, why are you jumping up, you know, in the middle of this trial? Who are you, you know, in, in reference to this court? Who are you in regards to this court? I said, oh, I'm just their friend. I'm their next friend. I'm the next, I'm the, you know, I'm the person who is going to, if they don't stand up, I'm going to stand up for them. I'm their next friend. I'm going to stand up next to them. I'm their friend. I'm here to aid and assist them. And they said, well, what do you know of these persons? I said, I know they're a person, but they're the persons of the Sikh society. They're Punjabi society. They are not of the English or the legal society. And a person is a member of a society, and depending on his rank or his status, that society may impose upon that man. But since he is not a person of the legal nor the English society, he doesn't have a duty and obligation because he has no rank within that society. He is not a person within that society which that society may impose duties and obligations, fines or penalties. He's a person of Sikh. He is a person of Punjabi. He is not an English person. He is not a legal person. This is the same guy I told that I was a citizen of the King clan. Okay, well then that's what you that's what you'd say. I am not what person do you wish to seek? Which person do you seek? You know, when I came home tonight, I told my wife about this and she told me, "Al, the judge is trying to help you." Yeah, what person do and you You're seek? saying the exact same thing as her. Right. Are you a person of the legal society? Are you a person of the crown society? Or are you a person of you know, the Douglas Society. I oh, gotcha. Or the Society of Man and Mankind. What what person are you? You just say, what person would you like me to appear? Would you like me to appear as a legal person? It's like, well, yes. Well, then, you know, if I am a legal person, then according to my rank and position within that legal society that you people may impose upon me, and if I, you know, if I act improperly, you may fine and penalty and, you know, yeah, and I'm going to be held liable for my actions or my inactions for failing to, you know, perform within the duties and obligations of the society that I ascribe to. But I don't ascribe to any duties of society within the legal society. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a, you know, a society of man. You know, I'm a society of my family, of, of, the, of the Douglas family. But no, I'm, I'm a man. I'm a man first and foremost. You know, if you wish me to be a person, a person of which society? You know, there's billions of societies. Which society do you wish me to perform as or come under? What, 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 how do you want me to act? Well, he even he even used the word want. I want you to. Yeah. All this is, is, is the reason why you want me to and the reason why you don't require me to. Ah. Oh, I feel included. When, when, he, when he's wanting of you, he's begging of you. When he's requiring you, he says, by my power and my authority over you. Right. When he wants something, he's begging. I thought about that all the way home. Yeah, I, holy, I drove yeah. 10 hours today to get home to visit my wife for 24 hours and sent her to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not good. Well, that is good, I guess. No. Not good, but we have our disabled son home, so I had, I had to get somebody to drive her for me so I could take care. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the whole. These are the, like I said, these guys are trying to, I guess, like I said, help you by saying, "I want you here in person." Oh man, 
What part? The way he was talking to me, it it felt like a threat. <laughs> but he kept saying, like he said it to me like three times. Do you understand? Like, do you get it? Yeah. And and I'm like, because I've learned to not you know, oblige myself quickly, I was like, well, oh, I, I believe I might. Well, well, I guess you better send him a letter, you know, saying, hey, what person would you like me to appear as? I forgot to ask you. Say, I was so worried about my wife going to the hospital, I forgot to ask you, what person do you want me to appear as? I'm I'm hanging out there all next week, so I will do that. Well, that's probably a good idea to get in touch with him as fast as you can. I will, Monday morning. Uh, and then, like I said, I know that guy, uh, Mike, from uh, Ontario, man. I know you probably talk to him a lot. Oh, yeah, of course. He's, he's yeah, he's, fuck, I like he's that guy. Yeah, he's Canadian. So, like I said, you ain't going to be able to get in touch with me, so get in touch with him. Oh, yeah. I talk to Mike what? Okay, well, then let him make sure that you're writing the letter correctly. Oh, yeah, he's helped me lots, man. He's been a blessing to my family. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yes. And you know, there's one thing you said once that that really made sense, and it was like, you know, these guys, you're 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 not you're not going to jail because of what you did. You're going to jail because of what you didn't do. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't get that. Yeah. It's what we're not doing. Right. I mean, like I said, if if you if you could act like a man, you know, he'll. Uh... He'll toss you a bone. He's just waiting to see that uh, there's a man, who, a responsible man, that he's going to set back out to the public who's not going to cause any harm. And that, that mean judge, my friends are calling me Dennis the Menace because of Judge Wilson. And uh, <laughs> I didn't realize he was throwing me a bone. I thought he was trying to trap me. No. Nah. Like I said, man, like I said, if I'm a judge, that's what I'd be doing to you guys. I'd be... Just begging for you, it's trying to torture your bone, man. Trying to say, man, can you can can you know somebody come forth and act like a damn man so I can let you you know so I can you know let you go. But if you don't act like a man, I gotta we gotta keep playing this game until you learn. Right. You know, so that's where I look at what they're doing to you guys. You know that you know they're they're trying to find a freaking man. Well, everything you said too, I've watched unfold before my eyes in my own case. I've been watching it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, usually you people right what I'm saying it doesn't um it doesn't ring true until uh until you people actually experience it and then you're like, Holy shit, Carl You know. It, it just makes sense, you know, it's like wow, I'm living it. Yes. And I am. Yeah, and you're like, Holy crap, you know, this is you know, it's like, yeah, people really don't understand what I'm doing. Until you know they actually got to go through it, and I say, now did you see him do this? Did he do this? Did he? Why did he keep asking you to appear in person? Because you'd make a special appearance in person, but you would not actually make it. You know, a general appearance. A general appearance is you'd be, as, you know, I'll appear as a man. But if you want, I'll appear especially in person. Then what person you want me to be? All right. You know. That's the way I'd be, you know. It's like, okay, you know, I'll make a special appearance just for you. What person would you like me to be? Would you like me to be the jury? Would you like me to be the prosecutor? Would you like me to be the defendant? Well, yes, I'd appreciate it if you came in as a defendant. Um, no, I can't afford to come in as a defendant. That just means to move forward. I can't move forward as the defendant at this time because I'm not competent. In that role, well, I do, play, I, I do play a pretty mean prosecutor. Would well, you like this would be the first time that I was going to come in uh, with my case because I have, I, I, I did my claim, and so this was going to be the time I came in with my case, so I would have standing. Yeah, but like I said, you just have standing as soon as he asks you to appear in person. I said, I'd love to appear in person. What person? What special person would you like me to appear in? I'll appear especially in person for you. What special appearance would you like me to appear in? How would you like me to appear? Would you like me to wear a wig like you and a big cape like you? Well, how would you like me to appear? What person would you like me to appear as? It's like this is this is this is like jolly good fun. What a game! Let's play this game. What game would you like? How would you like me to play? 
how would you like me to appear? What person would you like me to appear as? And that's the letter I'm going to write him. Yeah. Right. Special, that's what special appearance means. Okay. I'll appear especially just for you. One time only. How would you like me to appear? What person is that? The legal person? What person would you like me to appear as? And as that legal person, would you like me to be the prosecutor or plaintiff or claimant or defendant or respondent? Or how would you like me to appear? You see what I'm saying? Yes. I'm not as clued in as you are, but uh, I, I, I have the, some kind of grasp on it. He has a game. He's just asking you to play the game. Okay. That's why he said want. And I thought that was strange, too. Yeah. He's like, he wants you to. He's not ordering you to because you, you, you require compensation to carry out orders. He's begging. Yeah, and I did take his order and made him write it down. And He's saying, what, last time? Uh, it was about a month and a month and a half ago. That's right. He's he's saying the poor. He's, he's he wants you. He's saying I'm a poor little beggar Indian boy, and won't you please come, you know, in person? Right. You know, give a copper to the poor little Indian boy. I want a want a copper, sir, please. <laughs> I used to do that to Bali all the time, man. Do that copper for an Indian boy, <laughs> and and he started talking like a white man. It's pretty funny. <laughs> with a white accent I said like, dude you're creeping me out man go back to <laughs> talk like an Indian because <laughs> well I can talk like a white man too if you wish to speak like an Indian I will speak white <laughs> and I was like hey you know, that's creepy man <laughs> <laughs> well you speak in Indian's probably creepy to him yeah 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 <laughs> anyway, I, I was really messing with him <laughs> But like I said, he uh, started messing with me. It was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Right on. I am so okay. glad I caught your call tonight. Yeah, I just I, I was, uh, uh, the only reason I did it is because the man from Australia called me up and I said, you know what? I got to, you know, a lot of people, I heard somebody give Gus a hard time uh, on uh on a call a couple of weeks ago when I was, you know, some people came over on a Saturday and helped me. So when when people come over and help me, I don't answer the phone. I don't do shows. I don't do anything. I, if somebody comes here to help me, I spend my whole time helping them. You know, they got questions for me, and I spend my whole time helping them. Then. Great. So um, Gus ran the show, and you smart Alex were giving him a hard time. Oh, yeah, and, they give Bali a hard time, too. Yeah, so like I said, they were just crank calls. And I realized that, um, you know, people saying that, you know, this call is anything that works, blah, blah, blah. So when the Australian man called up, I said, oh, i got to get him to record him on the show. And uh, so then now some people from England or wherever listen, they could say, oh, well, we need we need the case number that this man was, what do you mean case number? The, 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 you know, the tax revenue service of Australia was threatening to take them, take them to court if he didn't, you know, you know, uh, divulge all his uh, earnings that year. I said, well, what do you mean a case number? What, what do you mean, what case number are you looking for? What are you talking about? You know, there's not going to be a case number. So I'm thinking, you know what, just, just let, these, let these people uh, hear the man from Australia explain exactly what he went through you know, the letters that they wrote back and forth, and he said that he actually uh, uh, recorded every single document, and he said he cut, you know, he, he, he said he'll uh, send me every single piece of paper, you know, from the very first letter that they wrote to the very last letter. I said, well, that's great. I said, then that way I could put it on a website, and they could see every letter that you wrote to them, they wrote to you, and then finally to their apology. Oh. Saying that you don't owe a debt, and uh, how about we, you know, we just forget that you know this ever happened because they threaten. They say hey. if, if you don't pay the money by this time, and you go to court, you we are going to require the court to you know have you also pay forty thousand dollars and fines, court costs, and penalties. 
Just like I try to tell all you Canadians, man, you guys all got these crazy papers that says if you plead guilty now, we got a we got a one time special offer. Go to jail for six months, pay a ten thousand dollar fine. I said, you guys actually got that in writing? I can't. I said, you know, that's communicating a threat and extortion. And I'm like, well, no. I said, well, what the hell do you think we call it here in the United States? That's communicating a threat and extortion. But see, if you're a person in their legal society, then it's not. Right. If if you're a person within their tax system, it's not. It's just a deal that you're cutting with a subordinate. It's like, okay, mommy says the baby. If you eat all your peas, you, you you get to watch TV. If you don't eat your peas, you're going to go straight to bed. So a kid could say, hey, mommy, that's blackmail. That's extortion. That's communicating a threat. And she's like, you're damn right it is. And what are you going to do about it? See, yeah, because I, you're, a person, you're, you're a person under her control and her authority. It just reminds me of, uh, of like my mishap that happened last spring. So I had to write my creditor's letters and... I was sending them twenty buck checks or twenty five dollar checks, whatever I could afford. And I got a letter recently here. I haven't opened it yet, but my wife told me about it. From I don't know. Sounds like a collection agency. So yeah. first thing I'm going to do is is write them a letter and say, "Who are you?" <laughs> right. Because oh, who I are you? Money, I have the money in the bank. I've been writing them the checks faithfully, even at Christmas. I said, you know, bless you guys and. and New Year and thank you for uh, stopping all uh, all accumulating interests and I, sh- I I should be back on track by March, okay? Because yeah. I've been working my ass off for this and I want to pay my debts and uh, so yeah so whoever the collection guy is uh, yeah uh, I'm gonna have fun with this. Yeah, the collection guy you just basically ask him. Um uh, you know, who's who's the man or woman? Thank you for this lovely letter. Who's the man or woman who's been assigned this matter? Who's been assigned this case? I was going to write him the first one. Just say, uh, dear BRO or whatever you're called, uh, uh, who are you? <laughs> no, B- but what is it, BRO you said? Is yeah. That- Some agency, you have to get a hold of us and all this yeah. shit. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. Say, so, you know, hello, uh, you know, uh, say, um, you know, the, uh, you know, you know, BRO, let's just say BRO greetings, you know, who is the, is there a man named BRO? What is the name of the man or woman who's attempting to communicate with me? So simple like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, BRO, is, 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 you know, is BRO your Christian name? I mean, what, what's, what's a BRO? Is BRO a name of a man? I mean, bro, your name is bro? <laughs> well, you know what bro means, right? What's that? Bend right over. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know, just ask him. Say, you know, BRO as in bend right over. You know, you send something funny like that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm not aware of that, you know, you know, that acronym. Is that an acronym? Is that your name? Is that a name of a man? You know, do I owe some man named Bro? You know, it's just, you, yeah, you just got to come at him with a nice little simple attitude like that at first. You know, well, I, I use I use this whole thing. I, it's I, it's totally my lifestyle now. I've been using it at work. I use it with people everywhere. Man, like, and that's the that's the whole trick, man. I'm trying to teach everybody, man. Yes. Well, you know, I taught this to my brother, and uh, in the early stages, I taught him, yeah, don't get people's first names, come by their first names, and watch the change. And he's like, Al. He says, you're right, man. He says, you call people by their first name. There's totally different attitude with people, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, Earl, the dirty Jesus beard that we were riding with there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Earl's a single dad with three kids. And his ex-old lady, who hasn't been around since the kids were in diapers, you know, crackhead, whatever she's doing, in trouble, in and out of jail. Anyways, uh... She's on welfare, so welfare decides to take Earl to court. So Earl does everything. And he sends him some notices, and and he goes to a parenting thing, and he, he does all this stuff, and he's never once to ask for a continuance. So in December, he goes to court, and, uh, and, and or in November, he goes to court, and he says, well, geez, don't you guys read your files? I got, I got all this stuff in your files. And they're looking at their files, and they're going, oh, so... The the prosecutor 
but he goes to court in December, and the prosecutor wants to drop it all because they don't have a case, because he is the primary parent. He's He's got letters from the RCMP. He's got letters from the teachers. They've never met the mother. Earl is the prominent father and parent in, in, in the kids' lives, and he's always there for hockey and everything. So they say, well, oh, oh, Mr. Klopp, uh, you know, you don't need to be here. We're going to drop this. And they were going after him for because uh, she's on welfare, so they automatically go after her for support for the mother who claimed to be raising the kids. Yeah. And they say, oh, no, we're going to drop this. You, you, you can just leave. So Earl's just picking up stuff that I've been telling him, and 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 he's listened to, to, to you as well. He, he's not a prominent student or anything, but he's just been picking up this stuff. So Earl reads the court rules and this and that, and and uh, so he goes to court and he goes to the lady. He says, "Well, no, no, I'm here already. I'm just going to stay here." And and the prosecutor's kind of a hot chick, and she's kind of showing off in front of him, like most girls do, because they like him. And uh, and the judge calls him up and he says, "Yeah, well, Mr. Klopp, uh, um, yeah, they're uh, you, uh, they're dropping this case, so you're free to go." And he goes, "Well, no." He says, "Well, hang on, Your Honor." Um, um, you know, I've never once asked for anything from this court. I've been brought here all this time. I've missed work. And uh, uh, what about my costs? And he says, yeah. here's a bill. And he hands it to the judge, and the judge looks at the bill, and she goes, oh, uh, well, I think it was for like five grand or something. And she's wow. like, well, I, or 3500 actually, I think it was. And, and she goes, uh, well, yeah, you know, you know what, Mr. Klopp, I'll give you five hundred bucks. Uh, and <laughs> she ordered the she ordered the court. This was a court order for the prosecutor to pay my brother Earl five hundred dollars. Yeah, and funny. the prosecutor just had a conniption, shit, man. She peed her dress, and she yeah. was like, "Well, oh, oh, we don't do that here." And she t- she she was so unprepared in that. And the judge warned her too. She said, "Look, he says if you want to press this." Um, I'm going to give Mr. Klopp a lot more than what, what I just offered him now. So yeah. you have a choice. You either pay up or you're going to pay a lot more later. Okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so all my buddies that have been kind of watching me go through my thing, and now Earl, they're all getting the grasp of this. Like, wait a minute. How did you do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. But did your brother try to figure out how it happened or the prosecutor lady? My brother was the one who put. Yeah, the yeah, I'm, I'm like, saying who, who, who. The end of the story is like who, uh, who thought that was amazing. Your brother or the prosecutor? Oh, the prosecutor. She's just screwed. She doesn't know how it happened. Oh my yeah. Brother yeah. and all our friends, like Wendell and everybody, are all amazed that the prosecutor has to give Earl five hundred bucks. Yeah. Wasting well, his time. He, he was the one. You're right. He was the one who was, you know, brought forth. He was the one who was ordered to appear. Yes. Just like if Elvis Presley was ordered to appear. You order up uh, Elvis Presley, one more Elvis Presley coming right up. Well, believe me, you're going to pay him a million dollars to appear. And don't think that he ain't going to get it. Mm. If he appears and he's like, wait a second, you know, my appearance, you know, it cost me, you know, everybody knows, you know, if you want Elvis Presley to appear, you're going to give me a million dollars. And you know, if, if you try to challenge Elvis Presley and he takes you to court, you know that's at least he's going to get us a million dollars because everybody knows. Plus costs. Everybody knows there's costs when you when you summon him to appear. You order him to appear. Like I said, the the queen does that. The queen has a the queen of England will say a command performance. Yeah, but she compensates. She pays them performance. She doesn't get it for free. And he didn't do it because he wanted the money. He did it just no. to fuck with right. them. Did, right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I tell people all the time. You know, they 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 summon you to appear. Fine, say so this an order. Yes, good, lovely. I carried out your order right now. Pay me. Everybody could be doing that. Every single person who appears in court, every single person. I don't care what it's for. Traffic tickets, anything. Everybody says, "Did I appear here? Yeah. Was I ordered to appear here? Yeah, great. And pay me." But I don't want everybody in the brother effing doing that. Man, this look just fucking stupid. Well, he was. I mean, they didn't. They didn't do any research, and they wasted his time. And 
and, and yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what it's for. Everybody could be compensated. Nobody could be ordered to do something without compensation. Yeah, it needs. Like know. I said, it's only uh, that's only if you're a person within their society. Then you owe them a duty because you have an obligation as a member of their society. A person is a man. Or his duty set society in which he subscribes, and depending on his rank, they could you know they could expect certain obligations and performances from that man. And if he fails to perform, they can hold, impose upon him, imposition in, in him, knock him off his position. Impose Great. They certainly can. Great. That's what I tell people all the time, man. You guys got to be uh, you know, careful with these these simple words they're using. That's why I keep using the word person all the time, stuff like that, for you guys all the time, and man. Well, I, I, I honestly thought the judge was trying to trap me, because he, he's Mr. Wilson. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, but my wife, when I told her the story, she said the same thing you did. Well, Al, I think he's trying to help you out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, how was that? Yeah. Well, he kept telling me to come in person. Well, yeah. Yeah, I'll be a special appearance person for you. What special appearance? How do you want me to specially appear? He's like, no, I don't want you to specially appear. I want you to generally appear. Oh, I can't do that. I can only generally appear as a man. I'll be there as special appearance. So I, I will. I'll write him a letter Monday and get it to him right away. I'd be glad to specially appear any way you want me. What mask would you wish me to wear? You said in person. Person is a mask. What mask do you wish me to wear? You want me to come in as a masked man. That's what you're saying, in person, a masked man. Right. Yeah, simple. Well, I have no problem coming in as, uh, you know, a father. Yeah, I wear a wig and I come in as a judge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would go over well. The guy already told me, oh, yeah. It's funny because the, the first time I met him, you know, and I'm, I'm like, well, where's my accuser, right? And, uh, He's going on about psychoval and psychoval to me, right? I think you need a psychoval. So on my way home, because like, I got some of the, the old shows downloaded and stuff, I'm listening to you, and and you're saying, oh yeah, no, if 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 you talk too much in court, man, the judge can order a psychoval on you, and that's exactly what happened to me with the same judge the first time I met him. Right? Man, but that's what's funny. Like I said, if, if the judge says it orders a psychoval, say good. Put it in a form of writing, and I'll go. I'll go carry out your order. Well, you just said I think you need a psych eval. I said, well, I'm not sure yeah. I need one of those. And instead of thinking of it, why don't you why don't you create a, an order, place it in a form of an order, and I'll go carry out your order. I guess I've been too chicken to be as aggressive as you are. That's not aggressive. That's happy. It's like oh, I think you need a psych eval. You know what? You're probably right. Why don't you put it in a form of an order, and I'll go carry out your order? Well, when he gave me the, when I asked him to give me the order in writing uh, to there's show, a way, there's a way you got to say it nicely. You say, you know what? You're probably, you're absolutely right. You know, you, I, that sounds like a lovely order. You know, I'd be more than glad to carry out your order. Why don't you create an order, write the order down, and I'll go carry out your order. Okay. That way, it doesn't sound like you were like uh, put in a put, you know create the order and put a writing sign it. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty hateful. No, I just I just said to him, I says, uh, uh, is that an order? He says yes, and I says, can I have that in writing? Yeah. <laughs> and then and then he he got madder, and then he was, yeah, you know that's probably a good idea. But write that down so you don't forget. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I need a psycho. I remember, I'm the crazy one. You know, you better put it in writing. So I don't, yeah, maybe I don't hear too good. I don't. I mean, I mean not really like crazy, maybe I don't hear too good. I don't I don't <laughs> hear well, I don't see well and Yeah. Me along maybe. to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Say too many women along the way. My my hearing and sight is kinda of going. <laughs> yeah, well. I would see that in front of my wife. Just say I kind of like the wild women, you know. My 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 eyesight and hearing isn't as good as it should be. <laughs> That's your story. Yeah. That's what you get told. 
You get a good chuckle out of them anyway. <laughs> Who's your counsel? <laughs> oh, Carl. <laughs> Carl who? Well, I don't know. I don't recall. Uh, I don't have his card. <laughs> I said, well, God's my co-pilot. He's <laughs> here see, see with us right now. Well, you have been my counsel. I wasn't yeah. lying. Yeah, God's my co-pilot. Oh, uh, yeah. God is my co-pilot. Yeah, God, yeah. Jesus is my co-pilot, and God's my counsel. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like God to appear right now? <laughs> he, he's like, oh, yeah, well, he say, well, here you go. I say, well, here you go what? I say, I'm in the image of God. I'm here. I'm a man. I'm in the image of God. See? Yep. It's always good for a laugh. <laughs> I did lighten up. I have been lightening up. But I've been playing more of the duck, you know, more of the Columbo thing yeah. than anything. Did yeah, but that? Did your brother had a good time, so that's good. Yeah. Well, it's been a great time. <laughs> well, that's good fun, man. <laughs> Giving a bill. But now you said that's great. Well, well next time. Because it's funny, man. He's lucky. Um, like I said, man, he could have fucking, uh, he could have taken a crown for everything he had. He could, they got a fee for five hundred bucks. You move a case against a man, and it's not true. Holy crap! You know, in old days, you died. Great. You bring controversy into the public where one doesn't exist. You bear false witness. That, that's one of the top ten death penalties. You just bear false witness against this man. Yeah. Did you want us to take his property from him? Yeah. Not really. What do you think we should do to you? Well, you shouldn't do anything to me because, you know, I bear false witness all the time. Oh, really? And you think that's acceptable? And you shouldn't have to pay anybody for, for doing that. Well, no. That's just my job. I'm just a fucking liar and everybody has to deal with it. And that is my claim right now with um with Ken is uh and I wrote him a letter, um you know, and I, I explained I I have not seen a proper claim uh against me uh before this court or any other court. Uh uh do you bring forth a false claim? And that's what I'm going into court with is my claim. And you're basically saying that uh, I'm just waiting for I uh, look, say so look, uh, you know. I'm not here to give you folks a hard time. You know, I, I got my checkbook out. I got, I got my wallet ready. You know, I'm just waiting for any man or woman to come forth with a claim so I could compensate them for doing them wrong. I haven't done anybody fucking wrong. You know it and I know it. And But as soon as that man or woman appears, I, I'm ready to compensate. I'm ready to, I'm ready to make them whole. I'm ready to beg them for their forgiveness, and I'm ready to compensate and make them whole. But it, it, that, that hasn't happened. You know, they say, I'm an honorable man. I want to pay my debts, but I don't owe a debt. There's no man or woman from any society who's come forth and said, I owe a debt to society. Whose society? What society? Is there any man or woman from any society who says, I owe a debt? No. Then how can I compensate? How can I, how can I uh, you know, how can I provide a remedy or a cure? You know, nobody said that I've done anything, you know, Incapacitate them. I've done. I've done anything to them. I can't stress the importance of having a claim to anybody enough. You know, I I, I was talking to Joe and Catherine. They had a court because they went up for sentencing in uh, what was it, beginning in November, and yeah. so I thought they were gone, <clears throat> and um, they had. Uh, what did they do? They pulled the private cu- private prosecution on the uh, judge and prosecutor, I think. Right. So and so, I was talking to Joe yesterday, and he's like, "Al, I know it's their jurisdiction. I know it's their shit. Uh, we did the constitutional challenge. I know that's their stuff." He says, "We still have our claim. We haven't abandoned our claim." And and I'm like, "Joe, you have not used your claim yet." That's why you're still here. But what they did manage to do was here they are in Calgary, and Williams Lake is, I don't know, 700 miles away. They had a court in their living room via camera with Williams Lake. 
<laughs> on Friday. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a hell of a... Yeah, well, that makes sense, man. That's a 10-hour ride. Uh, that's a long ways to go. Yeah, yeah, I know. I took the ride with him. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, Joe says, yeah. Yeah, no, I was making coffee uh, during court and getting everybody tea and crumpets. <laughs> 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 so... Uh, when I next week, though, I'm going to go over their place and 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 kind of work with them a bit on their claim. Like, is they made the claim, but they haven't used it yet. They haven't. They I don't think they got their their rules of court. Like they tried to get rid of their claim as a frivolous claim, and they did manage to keep it, but uh, they haven't used their claim at all. They haven't gone into court with their claim. They haven't uh, put a notice. That hey, we'll be a quarter on this day uh, to have a hearing, and 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 gave a notice into the into the the file of of you know the guy pressing the the, the complaint on them or they yeah, like I, said, I mean they're nice people, man, but they don't devote enough time to this. I mean they got kids and they like they want to spend every waking moment doing you know uh, ice cafes with their kids, and I mean I don't blame them. That they want to spend so much time with their kids, but um, you got to dedicate yourself to, to learning this stuff if you if you haven't done this stuff your whole life, oh, you know. That's... And and they they just don't want to spend that kind of time, you know. I mean, Catherine kind of does, you know. She kind of tries. She does. But like, I, but like I said, I called them up to heart for one time, and uh, she said, I I can't really talk to you right now. We got ice dancing classes. I said. You go to court like in two days, or whatever it was. So it was like tomorrow, whatever. You you've got to you got to stop and concentrate. Like oh, not right now. You know this is family time. It's very special to us. It's like yeah, well they don't see mom for fifteen to twenty. Then uh, then you might have a little time to talk. You know. Well, I'm hoping this week when I when I get together with them here in the next couple of days that I can press upon them that like guys, you have this claim. The claim is standing. Use it so that next Friday, when you're back in court, that the judge understands that you're having your own hearing, right, right. on this matter. Right. right. That you that you, you that you compensated, you know, the, the utility company for the theft. They did, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, so they compensate. That's what I'm saying. They compensated for the theft. You don't owe any other man or any other woman of any society any debt. That's right. I don't know a debt, an obligation, a duty to any other member of any society. No man or woman has come forth from any, you know, you know, a society and said, I've done them wrong. But because if they I haven't can't. used their claim, they haven't had standing in any of their cases, by any of the court hearings. Well, they, 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 stand as a, they stand as a defendant. Yes. You know, they're saying, it's like, okay, you, uh, defending what? Who do I owe debt to? I owe debt to society. Who's society? The legal society? I'm not a member of the legal society. And that's what they're going to say. You owe a duty to society. It's like, what? You know, this is what you guys always go about, the legal person. You mean, as a legal person? The legal society owe that too? It's like, yeah, but I'm not a member. I w- I, you know, it would be nice to be a member because you guys got a lot of fancy, you know, wigs and clothes and hats you wear. And you, you got a swell society going on there, but at this time I can't afford to. The Ford has nothing to do with money. It's just I can't go forward because I don't have the capacity. I'm not competent to be a legal person. Right. I'm just a common person. I'm just a man. I don't. I don't have the ability to be a legal person. It's that simple. I don't know the terms of order. Your legal society. I'd be a fool if I tried to come in and be a defendant. You guys are so much more. You know. You know. Uh, you know. You're just basically. You, you get so much. You know you know, wise or, you know, speak legally so much better than I ever will. I mean, I'll never be to your level. So me to try to defend myself against somebody like you would be a waste of my time. It would be a total joke. I'd walk into court and be a total fool. I can't keep up with you. This is all you people do. When Joe Joe does know, and he he is repentant of, of leaving basically Catherine with holding the bag on learning and everything. Yeah, well, like I said, too, it's like, look, you know, it's lovely. You're trying to give me a, you know, you're trying to make me a member of your legal society, right? You want me to be a person, you know, a legal person, right? Yeah, and you're going to try to bestow upon me this wonderful title known as defendant. 
And I tell people all the time, it's like, look, what have they told you? You're the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. You're going to smile and say, woohoo. It's like, yes, you know, Alan Douglas is the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. Woohoo. <laughs> you're, like, you're going to say, wow, what a great title. And they say, oh, yeah, Al, uh, next Tuesday, you've got to fight Muhammad Ali. You've got to defend your title. And you'd be like, what? Yeah, next Tuesday, you're the, the heavyweight champion, right? Well, yeah, you accepted the title, right? As the defendant of the heavy, you're the defendant, right? Of the title. Well, yeah. Well, now you got to defend. Well, who would I got to defend against? Uh, Muhammad Ali. Um, uh, I don't think I want this title anymore. Well, why not? You're a defendant. Well, the, the, the guy is going to prosecute me. The hunter, Muhammad Ali, he, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me with one punch. I'm going to, he's going to knock me out without even trying. Well, yeah, sometimes that happens. Well, uh, 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 I can't afford that. I can't afford this lovely title at this time. If, if, you, if you try to force this title upon me, you're going to cause harm to the man. You're not going to, you might, you know, you're not going to cause harm, obviously, to the legal person, because the legal person is just fiction. It's just a make-believe thing. Right. You know, you're not causing harm to the heavyweight champion of the world title. You know, it's just a title. Right. You know, there's a man attached to that fucking title. And you know, if you fucking hit me, you know, Muhammad Ali hits the fucking heavyweight champion of the world, regardless of the heavyweight champion of the world, in title, you know and I know he's going to break me in half. Yeah, so what do we do with the body? That's what I'm saying. So you have to say, I can't accept the title at this time because it'll cause harm to the man. But thank you for the lovely legal title of defendant. But I, I, I can't afford to come forward as a legal defendant. The prosecutor is going to slaughter me. It's not going to be a fair fight. It's going to be a waste of time. It's going to be a joke. You're going to crush me in court in one, one blow. What kind of game is that? You know, those are quarters where you go to play games. That's what a court is. A court is where you go to play games. So what kind of game is that? The guy's going to knock me out in one blow. What kind of game do you call that? Pretty, pretty, pretty boring game. Pretty heavy duty game. Well, that's why I knock them out with one blow when I go into their court. I bring in the court of man. I say, now nah, how do you guys want to play this? I'm like, oh shit, you knocked us out one blow. Yeah. Well, we usually knock you guys out. That's right. Can't do that without a claim. That's right. I can go in court and just you know knock them out with one blow. A couple of words, like boom, I'm done. They're like, shit, that was no fun. I'm like, that's right, no fun. Oh, you thought I was going to, you going to beat me around for a while. Oh, is that what you thought? Oh, that was going to be funny watching me get my ass. Oh, you thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, it was all you little word nerd, perpy guys, man. You think it's payback now because you got your ass kicked off through school? So now you're going to be bullies and you're going to, and you're going to be uh, making everybody piss in their pants. See you coming to the courthouse with a wig on and a, and a, and a, and a nightgown. We're going to be scared shitless now. See how, see how it feels, tough guys. And you used to beat up all those word nerd lawyers when they were kids. Yeah, it's just payback, man. Well, without a claim, you have no knockout. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, like I said, a claim is a good way to knock them out. You know, because they can see what's coming from across the other side. But, you know, being a man and being an image of God, man, that's a hell of a knockout. Once they realize God's not present. Well, they can't even hear us uh, unless we have a claim. Oh, oh they, they, they hear through that wig. They hear through that, that that wig has got an ear hole in there. They, they know when they're in the presence of a man. They know when they, you know. Just because they got a badge, like I said earlier, just because they got a badge doesn't... They still know when they're robbing. They still know when they're stealing. They still know when they're causing harm to man. Well, just because you got a badge doesn't mean you can rob from me. They sure don't recognize it. Oh, yes, they do. They understand. When they, when you say it in a certain manner, they know you. Know, that's why. Go listen to the phone call I did with some black lady from uh, Guyana. Who lives down in Florida? I did. I, I told Gus to upload my phone call with her. Okay. She had, she had three cops at the door. The captain. They they finally got tired of dealing with her. So 
So this was the third time they went down to her house, and I talked the cops off a porch. And this time they had a captain of the sheriff's department down there. They had the supervisor of the uh, social services down there. They were they were like, no more of this, no more nice guys. You're all going. We are a warrant. You're all going to jail. Da da da. You open the store immediately. Da da da. So, uh, you know, she had you. You tell she's got a crazy accent, man. Right. It's only three minutes long, and uh, it's hysterical, man. And uh, they all got in their cars and left. The third day in a row, man. Oh, it was Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Really? Time to get her again back in their car and go, and the baby's still at the house. I have uh, a friend of mine that I work on a shovelhead. Um, his dad's a judge down in Guyana, and what he does is he goes around the Virgin Islands and that and teaches uh, um, other judges how to be common law judges in the in the area. Who's Not Guyana? Guyana, South America. Well, probably yeah, probably British, not French. Yeah, no, British. Yeah, it makes sense because you probably don't speak French. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what this lady's from. I asked. I said, obviously, you're from British Guiana. She said, yeah, not French. She said, correct. I said, okay, yeah, because your English is pretty good. So I kind of figured she wasn't French Guiana. I've talked to his dad a couple of times, and uh, yeah, that's what he does. He's he's old. He's in his seventies. Still a womanizer, but. Uh, yeah. He goes around through the Virgin Islands teaching judges how to operate in common law. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Uh, I believe you. Yeah. It doesn't take much to teach a judge how to be a judge, man. This isn't rocket science. There's only a couple of key words they, they, they concentrate on. You know, so like I said, you could say, well, without a claim, they don't hear me. Oh, you better believe, man. They, you know. I can say a couple of words, man. They know exactly. Don't mess with this fucker. I wish it, it, it's, it's the way you perform. Like I said, like I said, it, I mean, there's been millions of people who've done uh, Shakespeare. You know, there's millions of people, actors who, you know, do Shakespeare, but there's only one Lawrence Olivier. Right. You know, just because you could read Shakespeare, just because you could quote Shakespeare, doesn't make you, you're not going to win an Oscar. You're not Lawrence Olivier. Right. You, you know, you're going to pull it off. Oh, I, I mean, I've watched a lot of Shakespeare, like, you know, movies or, you know, my time. And I was like, oh, this guy's horrible as Hamlet. Oh, this guy's horrible as Henry. Oh, this guy is King Henry. This guy's horrible. I mean, where, where's Lawrence Olivier? I mean, if you, I bet you if King Henry popped up in my face and started to talk, I'd say, who are you? He said, King Henry. He said, no, get Lawrence Olivier in here. He's the real King Henry. Now, now, if I want to see King Henry, that I want to see Lawrence Olivier. It's like, but I'm the real king. Eh, whatever. You, you still don't act as good as, as Lawrence Olivier does. Hey, uh, Al Pacino did an awesome, uh, uh, what was it, Merchant of Venice? Yeah, uh, Sherlock. Yeah. yeah, that was great. But that's what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is they could say they're lawyers, and it's like, that's great. But then I could get up in court, and I could litigate, and I could perform, and I'd go like, well, he might not be the lawyer, man, but he might not be an attorney, but holy crap, he's good. It's like the other guy said, but I'm the attorney. Like the barrister did when Bali thing. He's like, I'm the barrister. This is my court. Barristers don't lose cases in their court. I said, that's right, because I took over the court. You didn't see me lay my case down. He's like, he looked at me and said, oh, yes, that's right, you did. But you thought it was a joke. It was eight words. You thought it was a joke. Well, I guess you better understand what those eight words mean. You know, and then next time you see somebody throw a claim down before the court on top of your case, you better understand what the hell is going on. And that's Good. really important that you that was he had a claim that gave him standing to speak. Right, but like I said, there's a way I could appear in person and then flip the court immediately without paper. But like I said, it's being a Lawrence Olivier. It's being able to control that court, control that judge, look at them, and they look at you, and they know that you know exactly what the hell you're doing and exactly who they are, and it's all fraud. It's all bullshit. Well, I'm the one standing there with the dry mouth going, ah. Uh. <laughs> you think it's real. Because <laughs> you believe it's real. Well, yeah, they keep threatening me. 
That's right, but if they were tra- threatening the Chinese, you just smile and laugh. So I don't understand this ping pong crap they're fucking saying. Hey, old ping pong, you don't. You start laughing. And they start getting really fucking mad and pointing a finger at you, wavering real sternly. He's like, you, keep, you laugh your ass off. Did he just say nip pong, ping pong, ding dong? Did he fucking really say that? No, oh, this is very serious. No, no, no. He just said pee, ping pong, pee pee, wee wee, ding dong. <laughs> well, that's some very uh, that's some very powerful words here in the Chinese language. So, uh, you know what pee pee, wing wong, ding dong means in our language? <laughs> it's, it's a joke, right? You can't be serious. <laughs> so, like I said, you're just hearing them say words that you believe have power and control over you because it controls your heart rate, it controls your emotions, it controls your sweat glands, it controls every damn thing. Oh, it does. Oh, it does <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Because you believe that something that they're uttering has something to do with you as a man. I try not to let them know. <laughs> they, they, understand, they, understand, they understand they still got control of you. See, they understand this. They have no, absolutely no control of me. They know that. They know that I only answer to one authority. And that's God. So they can tell when they got a God-fearing man in their presence. And then they could tell when, when they could tell when there's a man, such as you, who's afraid of a costume. I'm only afraid of God. I'm afraid of anything, anything else. I don't I'm think I'll let know that though. I'm afraid, oh, I'm afraid what God's going to judge me as. That's what I'm terrified of. I'm terrified that I might not live up to a certain standard that God expects of me. That's what I'm afraid of. To live a standard that a man expects of me, I'll go fuck yourself. I have my ups and downs with that. That's what I'm saying. And that they understand that I couldn't give a rat's behind. I'm here to fucking compensate any man that I've done wrong to. If no man appears, the only, the only, the only you know, thing that I have to, you know, could judge me as God. And does any man purport to be God? No. I'm here to compensate any man I've done wrong. Have I done anything wrong to any man? No. Then let me be. And just wearing a wig and wearing a badge doesn't doesn't immune you from being a man. You trespass upon this man, you're a man, I'm going to hold you liable. Well, I'm wearing a wig. Well, I've got a pistol. I've got a gun. Dude, that's communicating a threat. That's extortion. And I have thought about that. Yeah. Just because yeah. you wear a wig doesn't make you, make you immune from fucking trying to steal my property from me. You know, when I when I go into court, not worried about that, like I'm ready to stand. I do way better than when I go into court worrying about my wife and my son getting thrown out on the street because I can't earn a living for him. Yeah, because like I said, that's a that's a big thing. I guess, like I said, for you, because like I said, they never, like I said, I guarantee the state of Alabama had never met nothing like me. Because I told them, I said, I'll explain this to you people. I said, you could chop off pieces of my kid and mail them to me in a box. I said, you, you could have me witness him doing it. I said, you're not going to watch. I'm not going to blink. I said, you're not going to get any emotion out of me. Why? I but, don't give him that. I don't give him that. It's I, just well, dude, but dude, I said, to, to, to me, this is just a game. I said, to me, I only have to answer to God for my actions or my inactions. You have to answer to your creator one day, too. I said, I, I said, I'll be able to explain to God with a straight face. I had no control of that. I had no ability. You put me in this game, God. You put me in this position. This is what the cards you gave me to play, God. You gave me deuces and, 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 and jokers. Well, what did you want me to do? I had no power. I had no ability to do other than what I was, what you gave me to play with, work with. And that's what I tell people all the time. God only gives you, God gives you, you know, the hand to play, and you play it the best you can. Amen. And it, so all he gave you, this is all you got. And this is the best you can do. So it's like, look, if you're chopping my kids' fingers off and you're mailing them to me in a box or you have to witness, why? Because you got 3,000 guns pointed on my head. What more can I do? As soon as I blink, you're going to kill me anyway, right? So I might as well not even bother blinking. I might as well say, you know what? Do whatever the hell you want because you know what? you got a gun on my head and you're going to do it anyway. And that's where I'm at. So do it. You know, what, what more do you want from me? You know, you're not going to scare me. You're not going to terrify me. You're not going to... This isn't hard to me. It, this will pass, too. God must want me to experience this for some reason. Why? I don't know. Why is this is it such a tragic or traumatic or horror, horrific event? I don't know. 
But you know what? I believe he's got something good planned for me. He's making me go through this for a reason. Maybe to toughen me up. I don't know. But no matter what I've gone through, I've always said, you know, it is what it is. And he's he's getting me ready for something bigger and better. He's toughening me up so that no matter what happens, it I'm not even going to blink. Like as I said, I guarantee, like I said, how many parents would have just finally caved in after 30 trials and not, not knowing why they're there at any of those trials, saying, you know what, okay, I give up. Just make uh, just give me a piece of paper, I'll sign it. And that's and that's when the judge said on the 30th trial, he said to the state, what exactly do you want from this man? Well, we just want a piece of paper from somebody saying that he's competent to be a dad. It's, it's, the judge was like, you're kidding. It's like, no, we just told him, you know, like, go get a, a competency, you know, from a, you know, a, exam from a, a doctor or psychiatrist. They said, honestly, he could have had his brother write the note. His mama could have wrote the note and signed it. We really wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't have background. He, he said, you don't need a, a doctor from Alabama. It's like, no, he could go to Virginia, New York, wherever the hell he wants. He could go wherever the hell he wants. All we have to have from him is a piece of paper from somebody saying that he's competent and fit to be a father. And we give back his kid. And he said, to, and he said to me, "You understand what they're saying? You, you get a brother write the note." I said, "Sir, I could write the note. They don't care." I said, "Sir, but I don't seem, I don't seem to, you don't seem to understand. You're a public servant. I'm the public. I'm the master. You're my servant. My servants will never order me to do anything." I said, "I don't, I don't understand how you understand how this works." And if he's a man trying to order me to do something, I'm not going to do it without compensation. Nobody's going to threaten me. Nobody's saying, well, look, just do this. I said, sir, I actually said that in open court. I said, sir, if you told me to blink and you'll give me back my kid, I will staple my fucking eyelids right here in front of you, and I will never blink again for the rest of my life. You will never order me to, to perform without compensation. I am not your slave. You do not give orders. I said, I'm a man. Nobody orders me. And it was just that simple. And he understood. I said, I will staple my eyelids right here in front of you. And I will never blink again for the rest of my life. He said, but that's all you have to do to get your kid. I said, sir, I don't care if that's what I have to do to save my life. I'm not doing it. So they, he realized, and that's the judge who walked down the hallway with me and walked down the park a lot with me and said to me, here, yeah, I'll help you. He walked right out of the fucking courtroom with his fucking robe on, walked down the court, went to the court clerk's office, made a call to the uh, Alabama Supreme Court for me, got the head clerk down there, said, hey, man, this guy needs his case file. We can't find this contract nowhere. you got to work with this guy. And he walked out and he had a Jeep wagon, he had a truck. I mean, he was a regular Joe. And he was talking to me. I mean, the judge really liked me. I mean, after I fucking said that to him, I said, dude, I don't care. I'll stay my eyelids right here in front of you, man. You tell me to blink, I'll get my kids. I, I, I ain't blinking. You know, I'll stay my eyelids in my head. I, I ain't blinking. You know how many dads or moms would just say, how many years did you put up with this? Where are you, where are you living? Oh, I'm living in a storage unit, man. I got one little storage unit where I would take a, a shower where I throw a couple of gallons of water in my head and the other storage unit where I keep my tools and I sleep. Why? Because I'm broke. I got no more money. I've been fighting you fuckers for six years. It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. I said, I'm done. I said, but I'm never going to fucking do what you tell me to do. You're not going to order me to do shit. I don't, I don't take orders from any man. And they just realized, holy shit, this guy's serious, man. He ain't going to stop. I said, oh, watch what I'm going to do to your legal society when I'm done with you. Because I want to teach everybody how to act like me. Wow. Yeah. And I, I'm guaranteed they're saying, holy shit, this guy's really... I said, look, if I take 10, 20, 30 years, I don't give a damn. I said, I'm a very patient man. I want to teach people what you people are really all about and what it takes to take you people down. You're a bunch of bullies. You know, you're a bunch of word nerds. You were picked on when you were kids. And now you know the words and you can control everybody with the words. You couldn't control them with muscles and so now you're going to control them with your mouth. Just like a woman. I said, you ain't going to break me. It ain't going to happen. Many have tried. It ain't going to happen. I just don't know how I got that so wrong. Like, my wife made it as the judge was, like, <laughs> exactly what you said about the judge, about yeah. hearing in person. And I was taking it totally the opposite way. Yeah, 
I'll, I'll, I'll be any special person you want me to be. I'll make any special appearances of any person you wish. What wish What wish do you want me to carry out? How do you wish to order me? And, but you do know when you order me, I'm going to require compensation. You do know that. So like I said, when they were trying to say they order me, they were ordering me to do a, a like a, a get a, a fit a, you know a accreditation of being a fit parent, and I said, and what's the compensation? I will give you back your child. He's not yours to give back. He's always been mine. It's like no, 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 no. Giving me back my child is not compensation. He's always been mine. That child's stolen. You, like you're not like I'm not going to negotiate with terrorists. I'm not going to negotiate with kidnappers. I'm not going to do it. And it's like, why? Because you're going to fucking give me back the fucking kid, and guess what? You're probably going to give me back a dead kid, or guess what? You give him back to me, you're going to do it again tomorrow, because you're going to say I'm a chump, I'm a sucker. This time you gave him back because I got the letter. Guess what? Tomorrow you're going to be knocking on my door, taking the damn kid again, and then you're going to have me jump through two, three more hoops. And then what's going to happen? Then you're going to let me have my kid come back after I jump through two, three hoops. You're going to have the kid's going to come back, and then you're going to make me jump through a hundred hoops to get the kid back. And then guess what? I'm going to jump through a hundred hoops, or pay you guys a hundred dollars in ransom fee, or court costs, or, or child support. And then next time you're going to take away, then I'm going to owe you a thousand dollars in court costs, child support, and ransom fees. Then I'm going to owe you ten thousand dollars. Then you're going to take my truck. Then you're going to take my house. Then, no, this is going to get sick and perverted. You guys ain't never going to stop. Once I do one thing for you fuckers, it ain't never going to stop. Yes. Yes. Like I said, man, this is, like I said, that's why I'm a very difficult guy to get along with when it comes to a woman. They just think, well, if I, if you, you'll let me slide today. No, I'm not going to let you slide. No, you're going to do what you agreed, and that's it. Well, I don't, I got a headache. I don't feel like doing that. Well, then get the fuck out. I'll get somebody else in here. Well, you're not very reasonable. That's right. It's black and white. It's going to be this way or that way. It's on or off. That's it. Goodbye. Go. Michael, everything I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. And everything you say you better do, you better do. If not, you're a liar. I ain't got time to deal with no lies. Well, my hand hurts. My leg hurts. My knee, uh, nose hurts. I'm dizzy. I'm t- I don't give a shit. you got to test the phone for form. You don't wish to do it? Goodbye. That's what, to, that's what I was trying to explain to my sister this week. She said, your hands are all black. You know, what, what did you do? I said, I had to keep the water flowing. I had animals down here. Well, you know, why don't you just, you know, stop? I said, because they'll die. I said, look, I said, oh, what do you want me to dial, dial uh, make a phone call and find a real man who'll come up here and blister his hands to these animals? That's ridiculous. I said, when you're a man, sometimes you've got to do things that are extremely painful. But you realize that there's others that require you to be in extreme pain so they survive. This is what you've got to do. I said, I don't got no complaints about it. I said, it just hurts like hell. I'm not whining about it. I don't need to go to no damn doctor. It'll be all right. It's just what you do. I said, there's no excuses. You don't blame nobody. It's just the cause God gave you to deal with it. I wasn't born at Tahiti or the Bahamas. I was born up here. It was fucking freezing. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. If I was in Tahiti, I'd be pitching another shark bit me in the ass because I was bending down to pick up some crabs and lobsters for the kids. Sad damn shark bit me in the ass. What were you doing? I was, you know, picking up lobsters and some clams for the kids. You know, shit happens. If I was born up north, I would not be wearing a shark bite me in the ass. I was, I was going down the road minding my own business, and the shark bit me, and the pirates got me. Yeah, that's right. That's because I was born at Tahiti. Shit happens, man. you got to deal with the cause God gave you. Yep, and we do. Yeah, do the best you can with what you got. Yes, see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, like I was telling one guy tonight, you know, quit being a victim. <laughs> 